Welcome back to more Heavenly Sword. Shut all the gates and bring her back now! <laughs> you want a crazy freak? Ooh, girl trouble, sir. Well, I could uh, slice her nicely for you, uh, but I presume you still want her alive and uh, a little kicking. Presume. I do not pay you to presume. Forget me, Rico. My troops will take care of her. I trust that you can handle the little one. Now, oh, with the delicacy, sir. Man, that dude is just creepy. I don't know what the hell is wrong with him. And how in the world did he catch up to her so quickly when he had the time to stop by and chat with Boromir for a little bit? I don't get it. Yeah, with these enemies, I do the strong attack stance, which is R1. And then I use the triangle attack a lot because sometimes you get that little counter attack like you saw me do there earlier. And you're going to see me do that a few more times in this video. Which is a nice way of doing damage pretty quickly. That dude's just creepy. We got to take him out. Can't be having anybody going after the Kai. I already established that if you fuck with the Noriko, you're gonna get hurt. I looked around in this area and did not see a health jar, which upsets me a little bit, but what are you gonna do? And I moved a body closer to this door as well. Well, why you might ask? We're gonna throw it at somebody, that's why. So why wouldn't you? And there you go. Just for fun. With these enemies, you'll want to do the opposite. You'll want to use the the L1 attack. And I think I still was going with a lot of triangle attacks here, just in case I could counter them. I know sometimes you get an instant kill whenever you can counter their attack. I think it took me a second to realize that, oh wait, I think these strong attack enemies came back out, so I need to change my attack strategy. I don't know if these guys are them or not, but I was warned that there are going to be enemies where you have to use specific stances to kill. So I kind of hope that's what these guys are. It seems really odd that you would need to do that, though, in a game like this, because I mean, we're just fighting dudes. It's not like you're fighting demons where you could have special attacks for each type of demon you're fighting. This does seem a little weird, but what are you gonna do? Dude, you fuck right off. Now there is a health jar in here, and I don't know why I stopped right there. I should have edited that out, but I did. Adding a precious second or two to the video! Damn it! Long enough as it is, actually. Health jar. Go ahead and nab it. We're gonna want it. bizarre. It fits him so perfectly. Yeah, we're gonna fight him this video, don't worry. Spoiler alert, maybe, but you know what? You 
kind of have to see it coming. This music just seems like his type of music. I don't know if you can do it on this stretch, but sometimes you can use that L1 attack to knock these guys off of ledges. I was hoping to get that to happen here, but I don't think it does. Don't worry, this is the last one of these little walkway areas we're going to be in that looks like this. As repetitive as this game is, it won't be that repetitive to make us have to go through four of these. Although, to be fair, three of these walkway areas does seem a bit repetitive. But what are you going to do? Counterattack somebody. That's what we're going to do. You know, I've actually done way more of those than I thought I would ever pull off in this game. It's really nice when you're facing a lot of enemies and when you can pull it off. Uh, what I did forget about was the circle attack. And there's a charge meter and it looks like it's charged up now. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. Something I'll have to remember for next time. Whenever I get to play this again. Our next section after this video is going to be another cannon section. Which I'm not looking forward to playing. So it's going to be a little bit before I actually get to play some hack and slash. Now that they're dead, should be another health jar. There is. There's actually another one in here, too. Which I didn't realize, or I would have used that one mid-battle. Now we get to do something annoying. Some more of an annoying variation on something we've already done in this game. Now to lift this up, this is not going to stay up permanently. Much like a penis. So you got to use it while you got it. Throw a disc. Ricochet off, and hit that little gong. As you can see, it's going to lower. That took me several tries. I'm not going to lie. Fuck you, gong. Fuck you. Bitch. I don't know why I like playing with those. And here's hoping that I'll finally have a video of this LP. I've only had one so far without any audio problems. Generally, my commentary tracks have been coming out much quieter than some of the game audio. Either I forget to edit the game audio in a section, or I don't lower the volume enough. I'm going to try to make sure that doesn't fuck up this time. Who knows? Apparently there are some swords you can pick up and throw at enemies here. I don't know where they are. I try finding them, but have no luck with that. Kinda sucks. Somewhere around this section, my controller starts to fuck up. The controller I was using for this game, and I used it for the end of Resident Evil Zero, met an untimely demise. When I was doing this stuff at the very beginning of last video, yeah, it was having some problems. I got a little mad. And it's no more. So I had to go back to my old controller, which I did find out what was wrong with that. It looks like the cable isn't staying in the back of the controller very well. I was still trying to find some swords, but can't find them. They would make quick work of some of these people. They're one-hit kills if you throw them out. Yet, hitting them with what's supposed to be the ultimate weapon in this game, it takes several hits to kill them. Go figure. I still do the triangle attack, though, when I can, because, like you saw, I can still get some counter attacks in sometimes, which is very helpful. Hell yeah. So I bought me a new controller. I haven't had a chance to test it out yet. 
but at least it fits with the cable a lot better. I was ticked off though because it didn't come with a cable, which upset me greatly. And it looks like it might be a used controller. Which really ticks me off. Lucky game is on. I think if you're gonna buy something used on Amazon, you should have to go through the buy used section. I talked about my experience with Infamous Second Son. And I felt about that whole process. I did try playing the first Infamous and yeah, that was not going well for me. Which is really unfortunate because that seems like that would be a fun series to play. I might still give it a shot later, who knows. I I've got lots of other games to play first. I actually have several PS2 games I still want to do. Plus several other PS3 games I want to do, and I'd like to start getting into the PS4. I'm almost done with the PS1 at least. A part of me feels like I should just go ahead and finish up all the PS1 games I want to do. What worries me is though, if I do that, then I'll come across another PS1 game I want to play. Part of me is thinking I should do that just because it would finish a console, except that I play that on my PS2, so it really wouldn't finish up a console. You guys, you should know by now, don't fuck with the Noriko. You get hurt when you do that. There are two health jars down here. Nab one, save the other one. There are gonna be two of these ledges. I come back for that health jar after one of them. Enemies on both. I really should have saved it until I got through with the second ledge. That mistake is on me, but luckily it's not too costly. Dude, fuck off. Fuck off! Thankfully, I don't think my controller fucks me over too much at this point. The main section I remember it fucking me over was in that battle we were just in. And I was thinking about it, I was like, should I just go do the other platform first? Which I should have, I didn't have that much of a loss of health. But I figured, screw it, whatever. I would recommend saving it until you get up, and I was debating which ladder to go up to. It's just a few guys here, I don't know why I get stuck here, but it ends up working out okay for me, because I don't think they can hit me either. Probably should have just stayed there and see if I could have exposed a glitch. But then it might have taken longer to kill these dudes. Too. Oh, and I don't think I have done a video since, so I'll just go ahead and say my minor surgery worked out alright, so far anyways. Yay for that. There are going to be some of these monsters. My goal is to pick up some items. There are a bunch of things you can throw at them. And I was trying to see if I could throw some of them and kill some of them ahead of time, but most of these throwing sections, they seem to go so fast that I can't really control it very well. There's a rocket launcher though, so that's helpful. Hopefully I killed at least one of them with this. I'm set. My favorite section of the game, the arrows seem to be more slowed down whenever you were in arrow time, I guess I'll call it, as opposed to bullet time. Really, at this point, you want to try, and I haven't figured it out yet, you want to try to not get surrounded. Just kind of fight enemies on the outside of the mob, and when they start to surround you, just run to get out of the way. Uh, 
That's what I want to do. It's not really what happens, but it's what I want to do. I'm really hoping Genbu, and I'm just gonna call him Genbu because he reminds me of that character from Tenchu. I'm really hoping he ends up helping Dorigo out in the end. It'd even be better if he turns his pets on Boromir and his people too. That would be nice. Or I could tell in the cutscene, and I don't see very well, so I don't know if I missed it, but it looked like Boromir threw something at him. And it looked like Noriko caught it before it hit him. So I, I definitely see him sacrificing himself for Noriko. I just see that being a thing that happens. It seems like a cliche thing that would happen. Either way, I, I hope he ends up, like, helping her out. I think that would be sweet. That guy, he's, he's got an asshole for a dad. He shouldn't be working for him. Maybe now, after seeing that Noriko was nice to him, maybe he'll kind of realize what he should be looking for and somebody to be friends with or anything like that. Who knows? Maybe Noriko will be his mother figure. Never know. Except at the very beginning of this game, which takes place a few days from now, timeline-wise. She's basically died, so... Maybe not? Who knows? Speculating about a game whose story has existed for 10 years now. But I don't know. I've never played it, so I don't know what happens. I avoided spoilers because I want to know when I play the game. You know, rewarded for accomplishing things. So now we're going to look for a health jar and then move on. Speaking of being rewarded, how about that season finale for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Huh? I did not have high hopes for season four, but it ended up being an awesome season. Ghost Rider was pretty cool. The only thing I didn't really like too much was the arc where they were in the mainframe. I didn't really care for that. Mainly because it was kind of an alternate reality sort of story. It wasn't completely the same like Stargate's done a million of, but I just, I don't really like dream sequence and alternate reality stories very much. I mean, it was well done. I go with the L1 attack stance here because I want to try to knock people off this ledge if I can. My goal, I don't really succeed at it too much, but I try anyways. And then you do the triangle attack and you get that, which is always nice. I got one still. Landed on the bridge. Damn it! Get off the bridge! Fucking go! We want you. Yeah, I was very pleased with that season. The season I was not pleased with was Supernatural's 12th season. I swear this show keeps getting worse and worse. Jesus fucking Christ. It's so predictable, too. And the worst thing about that season, they had an episode, the second to last episode, where they could have just ended, maybe not the series, but they could have ended the season there. And it would have been a satisfactory season ending. But no, they have to have one more episode, which makes sense. There was a big storyline they had to... Well, they didn't even conclude it, of course, because it's a season finale. And for some reason, shows nowadays have to have cliffhanger endings on every season. It's one of the things I loved about the first couple seasons. Well, I guess there was a cliffhanger for season two's ending. Never mind. But season one of that show ended in a way where... It, it was satisfactory ending, and it wasn't really a cliffhanger, but they still left you with enough to where you want to know what happens next. With the Supernatural season finale, it was... I mean, it wasn't even a big cliffhanger. Making you like, oh shit, I can't wait till the next episode. It just seemed like an episode cliffhanger for now. Like, okay, so then we'll have another episode next week. And it did not feel like a season finale. I mean, the episode itself otherwise kind of did a little bit. I mean, a lot of shit happened in that episode. A lot of it was kind of stupid, but, you know, shit happened. Uh, 
I don't know about that show. I really just want a place where I can stop, where the stories are all wrapped up well enough that I can just stop watching. I mean, I like the characters. I will be sad when it's gone, but it's just... It needs to end. And I may just stop. I've seen the season finale, obviously, but I may just stop at the episode before it. I won't be long, Marito. And when I have killed the little one, then we can begin our dance. You want style? And this is our last battle before the boss fight. Now that attack I'm doing there will block arrows. The thing is, you kind of need to be moving. She doesn't really move too much while you're doing it. So, let's be heading towards them and only do that attack once they shoot arrows. I kind of figure that out as I'm going. Like, oh, I'm not really moving. I guess I should come up and attack them. And use the heavy stance attacks on these guys. For archers, these guys are actually a lot stronger than you would think they would be. But they don't seem to be able to block the heavy attacks. I mean, most archers in games, if you think of Onibusha, God of War, Tenchu, most archers are kind of pushovers. Although in Tenchu, they still have a reasonable amount of health. It's just they can't block, so you can fuck them up pretty easy. Mainly in the Onibusha and God of War series, those archers are just pushovers. I mean, one hit, they're pretty much dead. Especially if you circle grab them in God of War. Fuck them up pretty good. Honestly, that's how I like my archers, as pushovers. Because generally they're annoying little pests. But, no, in this game... They have some strength to them, which I guess is different. When I found Kai, I hoped that she would come to know a different world. One not born of battle and bloodshed. I swore to her then that I would always be there for her. Perhaps it is not too late. There are few things in this world worth fighting for. But when you find them, then there is no greater fight. Alright, so you actually want to come back over here and nab a shield. We basically got to do something similar to what we just did, except we're just shooting at a gong instead of having to ricochet it off of something. But we're still going to be on a timer. So we want to be quick. Took me several tries, but we got it. There are going to be enemies in here. Just run from them. You don't have to fight them. And at this point... Oh, we got a quick time event first. And then run from the enemies. There's no point in fighting them. And for you all you visually impaired viewers, hit up. Left. Mash X. Up. Mash X. And mash it. And just run from these enemies. There is a health jar in here. I don't know where the hell it is. I wish there had been one in the last segment we were in. I didn't want to waste time fighting these enemies, though. Because it would add it to the video length, and there's no point fighting them. I did want the health jar. It's somewhere over here, but I can't find it in time. I don't want to stick around, too, because I don't want to take damage from these enemies. So just run straight over this way. We'll get a checkpoint and then a cutscene. And then it'll be on. Margarito! <laughs> 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 You're just in time. Go! The death of one so young is so. Delectable, and now you're here to enjoy the spectacle. I hope you've learned a few lessons. 
Uh, since we last danced, Nariko, uh, let us see. Nope. I pretty much do the same moves that I did back then. I mash square and I mash triangle. And I rotate between L1 and R1 stances or just without either of them. Yeah, this boss fight, he does this thing where he throws swords with two different glowing colors around them. One is the orange, the other one is the blue. I suck at that section. You're supposed to block it and deflect it and hit him with it, but I am not good at that at all. Fortunately, you don't have to succeed at those. So, later on in this fight, I'm going to learn to just dodge them, but it takes me a long time to figure out that, okay, if I'm not going to block them, just dodge. And I know what you need to do to block them. You need to use the right stance. R1 for the orange, and L1 for the blue swords. Unfortunately, too, there are also two health jars that you need to deflect the swords and hit with them in order to actually get them, which is complete bullshit in my opinion. I don't know what the hell they were thinking with that. I think that's a complete ass thing to do. But what are you gonna do? So, just fight this guy whenever he pops down. Like, I expected he was just gonna be a bitch of a boss fight. And I don't mean that in the, he was a really tough boss fight. It only took me two tries to beat him. I mean he's just basically one of those boss fights that acts like a bitch. Kind of like Gilvan Stern in Onimusha 3, where you technically fight him a little bit, but he's always sending minions after you and resorting to cheap tactics because he's too much of a pussy to just face you head on. To be fair, I've resorted to, to quite a few bitch tactics in gaming of my own. Resident Evil Zero being the most recent example of that, where there are several areas that enemies can't hit you or go past, and I would just stand there picking them off with my handgun so I don't waste my good ammo. Although if I'd known I was going to have something like 70-something shotgun shells left by the end of the game, I might have considered using it a little more. But that's neither here nor there. Hey, I'm so glad I didn't kill you during our first little dalliance, Nariko. Bitch, you do realize the only reason you didn't get killed, because I was fucking you up, is that you ran away like a little bitch. I mean, there was no chance of him actually killing her in that first encounter. Like, she was fucking him up. <laughs> Don't even pretend like you're all that good of a fighter. Really, just fighting him straight on, he's really not that tough. He's not a complete pushover, but he's not that tough either. Otherwise, just keep fighting him until the next stage. He's going to send out some clones if he hasn't already. And that's where the fight starts to become a little bit more difficult. That might have been what we were fighting there, I'm not really sure at this point. He's gonna send out more and more clones as this fight goes on, which the last stage is going to be a bit tough. But I'll manage it on first try, so hey, that's not a bad thing. And he'll still do the sword throwing thing. Thankfully he won't do that while you're fighting the clones. That would be a dick move by the game. As if putting health jars where I can't reach them wasn't a dick move enough already. Looks like I already got the health jar too on the ground. You really want to try to save that for the final stage if you can. I was dying though. I had no choice. I had to pick it up. There are multiple clones here. Trying to not get surrounded is the best thing I can suggest. Whenever she's fighting, the game seems to have her target an enemy and just kind of move in a direction that I can't really control her to get her to go where I want her to go. I feel like my controller may have fucked up again here during one spot during one of these fights, but I'm not sure. I can't remember. I think I played this all Tuesday after I'd had that surgery, which I think I already said went okay. <laughs> I'm thankful for that, but I'm not really thankful for too much else to happen this week. 
Fucking Chris Cornell died. What the hell, man? Even more shocking than that, that friend of mine that's been on some of these videos, and she's only a few years younger than me, has never heard Black Hole Sun. I don't even know if she's heard Soundguard thing, because if you haven't heard Black Hole Sun, I don't know how you've heard anything by that man. I think somewhere around here is where I figure out, oh, I need to just start dodging these things. But never heard Black Hole Sun, and she's... I don't know how old is she? 33, 34, something like that. Yeah, I don't know how the fuck she has not heard Black Hole Sun. Like, I, I'm sorry, but if you're in your 30s, there is no excuse for not having heard that song. It's not like it's an obscure song or anything. That was one of their most popular songs. I found that really odd. But then again, she's really odd, too, so... I assume she would admit that. But who knows. At least one of my subscribers, maybe even two, seem to enjoy what she's on. But yeah, man, Chris Cornell died. That was not fun hearing that. Like, most of those frickin' early 90s grunge rockers are gone, at least the singers for those, for those bands. Kurt Cobain from Nirvana, the first one, of course. Well, I guess, actually, there was another band that I'd heard of, and I can't remember the name of it now, where their singer actually was the first one to go. I think they are considered a grunge band. Only released one album, but for the life of me, I could not remember the name of that band off the top of my head. Uh, Chris Cornell did a side project called Temple of the Dog back in like, I think it was 1990 where they actually did a tribute to that dude. And that was actually the band that a couple of the members of Pearl Jam were in before they started Pearl Jam. But Kurt Cobain was the first one that I know of that died. And then you had Lane Staley from Alice in Chains, now Chris Cornell, of course, from Soundgarden. Frickin' Scott Weiland from Stone Temple Pilots, which technically not grunge, but I associate it with grunge because it was from that same time period. Yeah, the only one of those early 90s alternative and grunge rock bands that I listen to that are still going are Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins, and I don't even really like any albums by them after their double album. And Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam. And their last album was I don't know why I need to throw that out there, but yeah, it did. A couple of exceptions. Yes, yeah, so that really sucked. I was looking forward to more Soundgarden material. And I'd heard they were working on an album, too. Gotta take out my rage! Now we're coming to my favorite part. Mary! Mary! I'm gonna say I need to take my rage out on this guy, but now we're not gonna really fight him anymore. We're just gonna find his clothes. Although we will get the kill shot in on him. Yeah, I will see that. I hope he's actually dead. If they pull some sort of bullshit out of their ass and say, oh, he's still alive, then he's not going to be happy. This is the part that you want to save that health pot for if you can. I had no choice. It's only a health pot I had access to, though. Try your best again to stay on the exterior and fight enemies as they're on the outside. It's just going to work out better for you, but she will target an enemy, and it's hard to get her to move back. But I get this on first try, so that's always a good thing. And I tell y'all if I didn't, I have no problems admitting when something kills me off. And there have been plenty of sections in this game that have killed me off, and I've had to retry plenty of times. So how the hell can he make clones of himself anyway? 
That just seems really odd. I mean, this game seems pretty grounded in some sort of a medieval time frame or time period. I mean, we haven't really seen any magic or anything, I guess, except for the sword technically is supposed to be, I guess, magic in a way. Besides that, it's not like we've had any mystical elements or any supernatural anything. So I don't know how in the world he's creating clones of himself. Or what the hell those creatures were that we were fighting earlier. I love it when you do that. that seems really odd. And out of place. But it's also a video game, so what are you gonna do? And I can't see my hero. Awesome. Yeah, fucking Chris Cornell. Let's have a moment of slaughter in his honor. Okay, it would work if I were actually slaughtering something when I said that, but you get the idea. Just shoot him in the face. Gonna shut her cutting her down. Not a cold. survive these injuries, but a future that is tied to the fate of our people. That is why I am here. To fight for us. No. To fight for her. It followed me. Then it has found what it was looking for. Now is the time to stand our ground and fight. We are ready. Send this message to your lonesome master. If you have the courage of a real warrior, then you will come and meet our steel. We are ready, Bohan. We are waiting. How in the world are they suddenly ready for this fight? You'd think they would have been more ready at the beginning of this game, considering they were at least organized. Now they've, a lot of them have been killed, people have been separated due to the attack. That just seems really odd. We're at the end of the video, so thank y'all very much for watching, and I will see y'all next time when we